I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. All right, so when I laid the colors down, I laid them kind of in larger patches. I didn't put little tiny uh, threads of color. I, I kind of put them in large patches. As I'm melding them, I'm being very careful not to over meld. I don't want this to become one color and I'm making sure I'm bringing it into the edges so that I'll have plenty of material to roll when I pull the tape. I'm just doing kind of a skim. I'm not going all the way down to my substrate and pushing my colors down. I'm just basically dragging one over the other one. And you have to be very careful not to over meld. Like I said, you don't want to end up with one color. And the, facts that, the fact that we have transparent white, we have a transparent gray, we're getting so much depth. Now where I have large, I guess blob, lack of a better word, we'll have big areas and chunky areas of the diamond dust, which is what I want. All right, we're gonna let that move out a little bit. Now the reason I do eight ounces per square foot on this instead of three is because it gives me that extra material on the surface to cause depth. And then when we pull that tape, we'll have plenty of material on the surface to keep our design. You can see how I'm leaving big areas of my diamond dust and big areas of some of my metallic because I definitely want there to be separation of the colors. That's what gives us the marbling effect. So now what we're doing, we're coming in with our blue earth and we're just randomly putting some color down. We don't want it to be over the entire surface. And I, like, again, I'm just barely dragging. And as I move, I've got that color on my spatula or my squeegee. So if I pick it up and come over here where there's, there's really not much, it's just going to be a hint of that color every so often. I'm not putting any weight as I drag. Okay, so now what we're doing is I'm coming back with some leftover colors. This happens to be white. And I'm laying down just little lines, very thin lines. And what's gonna happen because this is still very fresh, those lines are gonna kind of sink and soften. And if you've ever looked at real marble, you'll see real marble has fracture lines and fault lines. So that's what we're creating. These lines will get very, very soft and they won't look that distinct. They'll almost look transparent as that white starts to sink down. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, it's been sitting, oh, almost 20 minutes. I'm going to spritz some clear isopropyl alcohol. So what's gonna happen, it's gonna, one, help pop the micro bubbles that are in it, but it's also going to cause the mica powders to react and give almost like a textured look, which is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna set my spray bottle at not a super fine mist, but I don't want big drops. And I'm just gonna come up high and I'm gonna hit that area. And you'll see how the alcohol just gives that mica powder just a little bit of a texture. Doesn't really affect the, the uh, opaque dyes like it does the mica powder. RK3 has a special guest. We're installing Rhonda's beautiful epoxy foam shower out here in South Texas on the coast of the Gulf of Mexico. Here we go. Let's do this. Here we go. <laughs> so you can see here, our holes already pre-cut. So we're going to take these and put them right here in the middle, pop them out, and that's going to give us a nice clean look. And that's how pretty that is. It cuts it really nice. And anyways, the, the excussion plate's gonna cover this up. You're not gonna see it. But what I like about doing it like this is that hole holds this together and it doesn't, it, it won't walk on you. If you're moving a chunk of granite, it's more than just two. What I found is when you're putting it up to the ceiling, it's always good to bevel that edge. That way you're not fighting that 90 degree angle. It goes up a lot easier. 
There it is. I've installed probably a dozen of solid natural stone shower panels just like this. And they definitely don't flex like that. If that we ran into that with, with we would have had to grind that. Yeah, it's and then you would have a bad reveal. Yeah, and now you're risking carrying that whole thing back outside. Yeah, nice template that, though. That worked out really good. It did. Yeah, so that's gonna be beautiful. Look at how clean that is. Good job. What a nice corner. It's the threshold of the shower pan. There you go. All right, there we go. Okay. So, this is a good idea. How we're doing it right here is we're mocking it up before we bring it in and start putting silicone on. It's always a good idea to test fit everything, um, make sure it works because we are working with epoxy and it's kind of grown a little bit right here, about an eighth. So what we're gonna do is take an eighth from this top corner right down to here and then we're gonna see if this will butt up maybe take a little bit off this top corner and then we're gonna work it from there. So you can see how this 90 degree edge right here, since it's not round over, that's probably causing us a little issue. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sand this down and then we'll see how that fits. Okay, so what we're doing is we're, when we're dry fitting this, because the wall's a little bowed. So we're putting pieces of tape so we know that we're gonna sand from here to here. And you can see that there's just a little flex in there. And so what we're gonna do is sand that off, come back and fix and see how that works. And while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and sand a little bit right here, from here to here, just to make it perfect. Using the sander, really, instead of using, like, say, the four inch grinder, yeah. that would have been really oh, scary. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, this one you could. What surgical. was that? How was it? And that's more surgical. You yeah. can really control it. Yeah. Watch the pipe. Watch the pipe. So, as you can see here, with a little bit of red guard and the way we've kind of shifted it over, um, we're gonna sand the back edge of these pieces. That way it's gonna fit nice and flush. This is MedX right here on this shelf. Um, and we encapsulated top and bottom just to be on the safe side. MedX is a water resistant MDF. If water happens to hit it, it's not gonna swell. We have some pieces um, at our shop that we have outside, not coated, nothing on it. And they look just like the day we put them out there. So Which was? Um, it was about six months ago. We're sanding the back edge, kind of like if we were planing it. That way the reveals are equal. We're using a 120 grit and it's working just fine. Silicone time. Pretty much done, right? Yeah. Let that silicone dry, the plumber can come back the next day hook up the faucet, hook up the shower head. Do the glass walls. Do the, you putting glass walls in? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that's where we put the MDF Smart. six inches in. Yep. That way we didn't have to mm -hmm. embed them. We just stick, stuck them to it. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that y'all have to know is the CA glue doesn't stick real good to the foam and the, M the MedX, the MDF. So what we did is we used quick coat to seam that together. That way that gave us a better bond. When we put the fiber mesh on, that just gave it the added security that we needed. Then with the epoxy on top, it's good to go. That was Why do you blob. put it in little blobs like that? So the blobs, when you push them tight to the wall, it acts as suction, that blob will spread. It spreads the surface tension and sucks mm -hmm. that on there. Sucks it on there, and then you don't have to worry about it. And then you um, do the snakes because you don't want any voids. Right. You always use silicone when attaching to the wall, when seaming, you know, sealing up where the two panels meet. And then you use paint grade on the outside in case they ever change <clears throat> their wall color. Just put a little line. And that is a good
that shelf sits on that, huh? That's a smart yeah. way to do that. So the reason why you do that is to help that silicone just in case that epoxy wants to come off since we cut it, that silicone is going to just make sure that it stays attached to the board. What I like to do is put a bead all the way around the perimeter, especially when you have excussion holes, uh, you want to go all the way around those. That way it seals any penetration in the panel. You want to make sure you go all the way around just for that extra security. When we installed all the silicone, I made sure that you put more silicone on the backside and just a little bit on the front and make sure it just has a a little bit of runoff slope down that way you're not going to have right. any water pulling on the back side okay. if you like this video and you'd like to see more like it let us know in the comments below we would love to bring you more content like this also if you like this video give us a thumbs up hit the bell for future notifications that way you will know every single time we post a video. Also subscribe to our channel. We have a full line of epoxy products on our website, rk3designs.com. We do same day shipping as long as you make an order before noon. And we also do free shipping for all orders over a hundred dollars. So check us out. All right, guys, you know what the routine is. Don't be scared, move forward and be creative. See you next week.